Okay, so I know you guys want to know what's the best location for a photo shoot, and I'll tell you. No, you know what? I will get my guest today to tell you, so let's go. All right, I'm here with the very beautiful Maria. She's gonna model for me today. Maria, do you wanna let the people at home or wherever they're watching, let them know what the best spot for a photo shoot is? Anywhere. Exactly, anywhere. So the goal today is we're gonna walk around, what's this place called? Karaya Park. Karaya Park. She's gonna pick out random spots throughout the park that she wants to shoot at. Could be a bush, could be lying on the ground. I mean, you'd have to lie on the ground, so maybe don't pick that. <laughs> okay. But you pick where we're shooting, and we're gonna make at least three cool photos in each of those spots. You ready Sounds to do it? Good. Let's go. Okay, where are we going? Where's spot number one? Spot number one. Could be anywhere. Here. Right behind me. Yeah. In the water, you're gonna go swimming? No. Okay, no, we'll get nice like, and close to the water. Yeah. We're gonna pose you up and take some sweet photos. Let's do it. Okay, so for this spot specifically, I like this tree right here. We had Maria lean up against the tree. There's some bushes here. We're gonna use that for like a depth effect. We're gonna try and get the lake and the water in the background. Very nice. How do you think that first spot went? It went really good. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Now you gotta find us another spot. So okay. let's let's spot get on the move. Two. Yeah. All right, on top of the white rock, right down there. All right, that's spot number two. All right, for Maria's second spot, it is hot out and we're in the sun, so making it quick. We've got a little pond with a nice rock. She's gonna stand on the rock, squat on the rock. As you can see, she's very hot. And I mean that temperature wise, she's very attractive, but <laughs> temperature wise too. And we're gonna get some quick shots here and then we're gonna move to the third location. Hopefully a little cooler, maybe pick one in the shade, I don't know. So we looked immediately to our left. There was a spot with shade. It's an open field, so it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but we're gonna, we're gonna make something pretty out of it, I'm positive. And it's in the shade so we can actually not die out here. Right there, that's our hill. We're gonna make it work on that hill. Let's do it. So the first thing I notice is this path. Maybe we'll get you standing on the path. Right there, yeah, beautiful. We'll do some poses like that. Okay, so those are the three spots. How do you think those went? So good. So good, right? So like, good. Yeah. the point is I'm trying to make is that you can do a photo shoot anywhere, even like, in your own home, there's thousands of mini locations for a photo shoot. But now that we've got kind of everything we set out to do in terms of finding random spots and doing photo shoots, we're in such a nice place that I want to get some like legit planned shots. So. We found a sweet little area within the area and we're gonna get some as many shots in this area as we can like check it out behind me you've got some plants you've got a nice little stone walkway a little like halfway over there very serene it's very like out of place in a sense but it's it's really lovely I like it I'm just gonna snap a bunch of shots and that's another thing I would tell you guys at home to do is just take way more pictures than you think you need because you can never have too much and you can always go back and edit them later All right, that about wraps it up. I'm gonna go home, edit these photos, and obviously send them to her for all of her hard work. How do you think that went, knowing that we just picked random spots and I've, then did a shot? I think it went really, really well. Right? Yeah. Like it's a lesson for everybody at home. You have really no excuse. Like, you could be like, oh, I don't have a location. Yeah, you do. Go outside, go in your basement, go upstairs, wherever. You've got a place to shoot. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. You guys want to edit a picture together? I don't know why I said that like I was expecting a response. Let's go. All 
All right, let's edit this one quick. We'll just go through like a, a quick basic edit, nothing too complicated, just a little portrait retouch. I picked my favorite shot from the shoot with Maria and we'll just step by step go through what I'm gonna do. We'll keep it light, keep it simple, keep it fun. All right, so here's our shot. I love this shot because you've got the blurred out background. I believe I shot it with the 85 millimeter at F4. Blurry bushes in the background, blurry bushes in the foreground. It sort of sets that depth and it sort of frames her up really nicely. I do, however, think that the shot is too green. So I'm gonna go to the presets on the side and go to one of my presets that, spoiler alert, I might be releasing in a little while. Some more free presets coming your way, guys. So as you can see already, we've sort of made the greens a little bit yellow made the skin a little bit brighter and it's also desaturated it a little bit. So we're gonna go back to our adjustments and the preset brightened it up a bit. So we're gonna bring down the exposure, bring up the shadows just a little. I'm gonna change the luminance on the greens to be a little bit darker, a little darker. And same with the yellows, just to draw more attention to her, brighten up the oranges a little bit and a little bit more saturation in the reds. A little in the oranges. Let's go back to our basic adjustments. What I want to do is draw a little bit more attention to her face. So I'm going to get the radial filter a little bit bigger than her actual head and set the exposure a little bit higher. Not too much because if you go all the way, it looks like somebody's shining a spotlight right in her eyes. That doesn't work, but just a tiny bit. So it draws focus there. Perfect. Now I'm going to use that same radial tool and draw a new circle. This time, however, I'm gonna invert it and lower the exposure just to create a bit more of a vignette, draw the eye in a bit more. So that was done in camera raw. We're gonna put it into Photoshop now and just do some minor adjustments. We're gonna crop it for Instagram because that's where this is gonna live. So we're gonna set our ratio to four by five. It automatically does that for you. And we're gonna drag the image up just a little so her chin is kind of like hitting that rule of thirds line. We want to draw the eye to her face. And I think the natural framing plus the cropping does that pretty nicely. So now that I'm happy with the crop, let's duplicate the layer. If you don't know why I duplicated the layer, I have a video from the past, a way back playback about how you should handle your files and not do it destructively. I'll link it up top, but we're not going to destroy our picture. We're going to zoom in, fix any minor imperfections on the face. Now, Luckily, Maria is a very attractive young woman and she didn't have very many blemishes, nothing like that. There's a little pimple covered up by makeup on her chin. We're just gonna use the healing tool and we're just gonna drag that, easy fix. You know, you can, you can push this as far as you want, but I think it doesn't need a lot of work. You also don't wanna push it too far because then you get that fake plasticky looking portrait. We don't want that. We're gonna soften her skin just a little bit. You can see there's quite a few pores. So with a soft brush set to about 10% opacity, we're gonna use the eyedropper on the areas of skin we want and just lightly brush in. Again, not overdoing it. Just, you're, you're basically coloring. So you're gonna to wanna to use that eyedropper tool to have your hand on the Alt key and you're gonna eyedropper whatever section you're working in. Just soften it up a little, again, I can't stress how much less is more. You don't want to push it too far. One thing I like to do is, I mean, everybody has natural bags under their eyes a little. So I'll just grab the color close to the under the eye and just brush it in a little. You don't want to get rid of it completely because it looks unnatural, but just soften it up a little. I wish somebody could do that to me in real life. I'd be a lot more handsome. Brush the forehead in a bit. All we're really doing here is sort of minimizing the look of the pores. You still want pores because that's natural looking, but you don't want them to overtake the entire picture. So let's see the difference here by turning on and off the layer. You can see her face just gets a little bit brighter and a little, it loses a little bit of contrast. So what you can do is again, duplicate that layer you just edited. In case you don't like something, you can always delete the layer and start over from the previous step. We're gonna hit O on our keyboard to get the dodge and burn tool. And with about 10% exposure, again, we're just gonna lighten up some of the highlights very lightly and quickly brushing it in and then we're gonna hold down our alt key and darken up some of the shadows just to add a little bit of that contrast back to the face we don't want it looking too too flat um, the other thing i like to do is i like to go into the eyes 
the eyes are the window to the soul. So I like to use that dodge and burn tool just to brighten up the whites a little bit, touch up the colored part of the eye. Is that the iris? Color, the iris? I think it's the iris. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Touch it up a little bit just to get a little bit more color. She's got nice brown eyes. You want to see that. So there we have it. You can see the original and what we've done. We've just lightened it up a little bit. And the last thing we're gonna do is, one of my favorite things to do with portraits, again, duplicate that layer, Control J, Command J, whatever you're working on, and then desaturate it. Command or Control, Shift, and U. It'll make your image black and white. Then you're gonna go to Filter, Other, High Pass. You're gonna get this weird image. I also did a tutorial on this. You can see there's kind of like a glow around the details. You don't want too much, less is more. And you're gonna hit OK, so this doesn't look right what you're going to do is go down change that blend mode to overlay and it might be difficult for you guys to see on screen i'll zoom in so i can show you guys as best as possible but when you add and remove this layer especially you notice it around the hair it adds a lot more detail we don't want detail over the entire picture so we're gonna create a layer mask on that layer invert it so it hides everything and now go back to our brush tool with 50% opacity and we're just gonna brush in sort of around the eyes we want detail in the eyebrows maybe across the lips and you know what a little bit in the hair not too too much everybody has their own personal style this is just what I did I think this is my favorite photo from the shoot um, again you guys can push it or pull it as much as you want everybody's got their own style I'd be curious leave a comment down below if you guys want me to provide one of the raw files for one of my shoots. I would love to see how you guys each individually edit and the final result from the same raw file. I'd love to see everybody's different style. So if that's something you guys wanna try, leave it down in the comments below. If you guys like the video, if you want more of this, what? tell me what you like. You know, Do you like the vlog portion where we're out shooting? Do you like the editing breakdown? Leave it in the comments like the video, hit that bell, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Love ya!